All right, guys, this was a tough one. If you'd have asked me about two hours ago how to do an iotometric titration, I'd have had no idea. But I went hard in the scientific paint for you guys tonight to figure it out. Now I'm going to tell you. This is the easiest way I've ever found to, you know, imagine this. It took me drawing some pictures and stuff, but I got your back. Check it out. Iotometric titrations are often for determining how much of an oxidizing agent are inside a solution. The most common titration that you guys will end up doing is trying to figure out how much bleach is in a, I don't know, solution, like a bleach solution, like the one you buy at the store. It's got sodium, oh, well this is actually uh, hypochlorous acid. What's in the bleach is probably sodium hypochlorite, but you know, same thing. Point is, this can oxidize iodide. How do you do an iodometric titration? Step one, add a buttload of iodide to the solution. What happens when you do that, in this case, is that the hypochlorous acid reacts with the iodide. Here I've assumed it's uh, hydroiodic acid, but I don't care, it could have been sodium iodide, could have been potassium iodide, could have been anything you want iodide. What happens is, the oxidizing agent, uh, uh, oxidizes the iodide into I2. That's iodine, molecular iodine. You end up with some byproducts, but the point is that you've oxidized iodide to iodine. Then, check it out. I minus, extra I minus, that's why you added a buttload of it, complexes with the molecular iodine produced to make I3 minus. The point is, you add a whack load of iodide, makes I3 minus. As many, well, we, you, for every two iodides that got reduced, you end up with one of these. All right, so now inside your solution, you don't have any more HOCl, but you have an amount of I3 minus that corresponds to how much oxidizing agent or HOCl you started with. Then what do you do? Well, then you titrate this with thiosulfate. Oh no, did I not write down the reaction for that for you guys? Maybe I have it here. Uh, I don't have the reaction for you, look at me. The point is that when you have I3 minus, which contains I2, reacting with thiosulfate, you end up with, I don't know, some product. I wish I had that for you, but whatever, who cares? Point is, this gets rid of that. So, all of a sudden, you don't have any more I2, or in this case, I3 minus. You've changed it all back to I minus. Now, this is your standard solution, so you know exactly how much of that you added, that way you can calculate how much of this you had created in the first step. And that's what lets you quantify how much of this you had in the original solution. Now, the deal with this kind of titration is, it's tough for us to actually detect I3 minus, but we got a little trick up our sleeves. We add starch near what we think is the end point of the titration, because somehow starch and I3 minus make love and that produces a very dark compound whereas if you have starch and it's only I minus left there's no color at all. This is actually called a clathrate because the I3 minus slides into the starch <laughs> yeah that just happened goes into the starch molecule and causes you know some kind of molecular distortion that makes the chemical appear dark blue. So if you have I3 minus left, the solution's dark. And you know you're done, i.e. when you've converted everything back to I minus, because the color disappears. True story. Let's summarize that one more time. Have oxidizing agent. Add buttload of I minus to get I2. I2 is represented in solution by I3 minus but you're titrating the I2 away by reaction with thiosulfate. When you think you're near the end, what you're doing is adding starch, because if you have any I2 left over, it's gonna appear as dark blue, and you're done 
when the dark blue disappears completely. All right, guys, good luck with your own iotometric titrations. I may post a little calculation video to show you what the ratios are like later, but the point is, this is how it happens. You can figure out the rest yourself. Best of luck.